Hi, I'm Sean Smith. This is Sean Smith Photos, where I edit street photography and occasional travel photos with On One Photo Raw. So uh, before I start today, uh, shout out to subscribers. I hit 100 subscribers on Saturday morning, sometime like 3 or 4 in the morning. I woke up and I was at 100. Thank you so much for subscribing. Uh, it helps motivate me to uh, continue doing content. So uh, anyways, today's video, uh, we're going to look at exposing and developing for the highlights. So this is something that I learned recently uh, with one of uh, um, the more experienced photographer or street photographers that I go out with regularly. Uh, I believe his Instagram account is at roving eye. Uh, go check it out. Brilliant. Excellent, excellent. So I I have the pleasure of going out and walking with him once in a while. And uh, one of the things I picked up recently was, hey, I need to do more exposing for the highlights, which uh, generally has means having a darker, darker shadows and looking for beams of light and things like that. Uh, so I tried that. Uh, couple of weeks ago I got one shot that was kind of okay I went out yesterday with a new photographer friend um, and we're walking through an area that I haven't been in Toronto in a long time and I saw this mural with Harry Styles and you can see here these beam of light and the goal here was to wait for somebody to cross through this beam, underexpose the shot so that we're exposing for the highlights, which would be the beam of light. Well, in this shot, which is the first of the series that I took, uh, you can see that exposure compensation is at zero. Um, and this guy's not that interesting, but it was kind of a test shot. And then I went, let's uh, click through here. I took a couple of shots of him. And this is the shot that I'm actually going to develop. And you can see over here that the EV is two thirds of a stop down. So it does have darker shadows and the highlights are a little bit more obvious, but it's not what I'm looking for. So what I want to do is clean it up and fix it up in post. Now, this last shot in the series, this is getting much closer and we can see it's at EV minus one, but this guy, I don't know, it just wasn't that interesting. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work with this shot and we're gonna try and get what I have in my mind. I'm Gonna be learning as I go because I really don't have a lot of experience with this, but I, I know what I want and let's see if we can get it. Let's get to it. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is hide the film strip so we can get more of this and control left arrow should hide the catalogs tab because we don't need that anymore. Now we've got a nice big broad view here and uh, the first thing I need to do is straighten my horizons. Hit the C key and then grab the level tool and we're going to just level that up like that. And I think we'll crop in nice and tight. And maybe crop out yeah I think this is going to be good so we'll, we'll crop out those things on the left pull down just a little bit oh yeah that's 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 much 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 better okay so let's do our camera profiles now and uh, vivid looks good Yeah, I'm going to go with on one vivid. Okay. And next we will hit the AI match. 
not bad. And try AI auto. You know what? I think I'm just going to keep it on manual. I didn't really like either one of those. So uh, let's pull back on our shadows. Pull back. Oh no, actually we'll fix the highlights up here with the effects tab. Drop the contrast. Mm, reduce the haze a bit. Oh, that's, that's doing too much. Just a bit. Add some structure. Let's warm it up. There we go. That's good. And just a quick test. Saturation is at minus five right now, but I'm going to just pull it all the way back. And yeah, see, this is getting much closer to what I want. Uh, we got these deep shadows here and these guys in shadow. We need to pull them out a little bit and increase the, the contrast of the mural because it's really faded with the sun on it. All right, so uh, let's pull the saturation back up to minus three because we're going to actually use uh, the effects tab to do this. Okay, let's head over into effects. And I think, yeah, let's just put the black and white filter on first. And as usual, we'll hover over here and use the down keys to cycle through our presets. So let's, let's check out Rody. Rody. And the other one was that I liked was green. Green and Rody. Okay, I'm going to go with Rody. And I, what I typically do is I'll turn off the black and white and take a look at the colors that I want that are in the that are behind the black and white filter so I can kind of enhance them, uh, making them deeper or brighter as uh, needed. So we got this bright yellow up here, which is being hit by the sun. And it particularly in black and white, I, I find it a little bit too faded. So I'm going to take the yellow one and I'm going to darken it. Yeah, see, well, see, that's that's a lot better. So we, we drop the yellow a lot and let's find uh, maybe we drop the reds a bit. That'll probably help the orange. There we go. Yeah, this is this is looking pretty good. This is looking pretty good. OK, um, let's hit the tone. Uh, we'll deepen those shadows. Darken the highlights just a bit. Yeah, just a bit. Uh, drop the brightness. Yeah, okay. So th I think this is getting really, really close to what I want. And let's close this. And we will add some dynamic contrast. And we'll go with the texture filter because there's a lot of texture in this brick facade. So we'll go with that. And adding this in has really crunched it up in the darker area. So I'm going to turn that on and off. I think it helped a lot up top, but below this, these windows, it's crunched up too much. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the gradient tool and we'll go linear bottom and drop our line right about here. Narrow this maybe like this. And now let's turn this on and off. Yep, uh, it's a little bit too strong for me. So let's play with the smalls. Yeah, we'll drop the smalls down a little bit. Uh, medium's at 10, increasing that, decreasing it. 
maybe we'll drop it down a couple. So we'll go with seven. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. What are the large, large ones doing? Let's put the largest back where they were. Yeah, and we'll turn this on and off. Drop the opacity just a titch. And there we go. I am happy with that. Okay. So this whole building here, this whole building facade is looking good. But what we need to do, I feel, is pull out the brightness around these guys here, like the shadows just on them. Uh, but first, I'm going to turn off this to see. All right. Um, so let's add a tone enhancer. And we're going to use the gradient filter and uh, oops, edges. And we'll just drop it right here. Get this right around these these guys. Nice big feather. And where's shadows lighter? Yeah, shadows lighter. And that does a good job there. And pull the exposure up just a little bit. Maybe 0.5, yeah. Uh, pull up the blacks just a little bit more. Okay. Let's open up this thing again and grab the gradient tool. And we'll, I think we're going to make this feather a little bit less obvious. And let's reduce the opacity. I'm going to make that a little bit more subtle. There we go. Kind of like that. So we've got a before and an after. And yeah, I'm really, really happy with that. And let's take a look at our filter options and see what else we uh, could do to this. Maybe we add uh, some sunshine to the shot. And we could, oh, you know what? Let's take this tone enhancer mask. We'll copy that mask. And we'll open up the sunshine mask filter and apply the same mask. Maybe reduce the density so that we get some shine some sunshine in the rest of the photo. Now that's really subtle, but I like it. And let's take a look at a vignette and the big softy. And as I mentioned in my previous video, the, the four tips for better editing, you can center the big softy wherever you want. And the key to doing that is take the feather, drop it down to zero so that you can see where the filter is. And we're going to reduce the size. And then down here, you click this little box and click and hold and you can drag this around. So I kind of want this like that. And I'm going to increase the roundness and the brightness just a little bit. Uh, I'm going to move it one more time. So I kind of want like that. And then let's pull the feather back up. And we'll turn this on and off and yeah this is really really close to what i was looking at when i saw the scene so you know if you enjoy this video 
Uh, don't forget to subscribe. You can find me on Vero, Instagram, and my website. Links are below. Uh, let's take a look at the before and after. All right, so this is the original shot, and this is the final shot. I'm going to call that an edit. Thank you for watching.